Hey, I knew I'd see you here. It's Alan. 2.2, the limit of a function. All the stuff we just got done introducing and talking about in more of a definition-based section where we're going to actually get our hands a little bit more dirty rather than just talking the hypothetical. Okay, so buckle in and be ready to take a lot of notes. Fill in the blanks. If you haven't already read through this section in the book, please go through and do that. Try to fill in as much as you can. Some of it's repetitive. Otherwise, you can find it in the ancillary textbook on OpenStax. I would not say this every section at the beginning, but wanted to remind you at the beginning here as we're getting into this a little bit deeper. Here we go. All right, so last section we talked about the two things that propelled calculus to become calculus that it is today, the tangent and area problems. And in order to introduce both of those, we had to come up with this new thing called a limit. So that was the basis of that section and what is going to be this entire chapter. So let's review the definition that was of utmost importance. And that was, and remember the way that we read this is the limit of our function as X approaches some value A is, if it exists, equal to some number L. One thing I wanted to remind you of also, very important for this, it's a must is that our y value, that L, as our x approaches some number we're calling A from, again, both sides of it. it. Has to be that in order for it to work. And remember, as long as it's approaching both sides of A, that same y value we call L, then the limit exists and we provide that value. But there are also times that we're going to want to find just one side of it, and not so much for a scenario like this, but we'll get to that in a little while. These definitions can be wordy, so I wanted to just give them to you guys as symbols in a more simplistic way. But what we're talking about here is the right and left side. So as we just mentioned, it's important that you talk about finding a limit as x approaches some number, that means it's approaching from both sides of that value. But we can also do it from just the left or just the right. And if you think about a number line, right, no matter where that a is, how would we generalize it as we're approaching from the right or the left? Well, let's just take the value zero. Because that's one thing that we knew, one number that we knew. The right were always positive things. The left were always negative things. And that's the only value that has that. If we did, say, a 1 here or a 4, well, then to the right of it would be the 4.1s and 2s and 3s, whatever it might be. And here would be the 3.9. So to generalize things, from the right and the left, we will actually use the value zero to think about the right being positive and the left being negative, because then we can generalize anything as we say to the right or the left without having to say those words. Symbolically, it would look like this if we had just our regular limit, which remember means both sides of A. But if we only wanted the left, then we said we would use the negative. Now, we don't want to put negative in front of A because that would mean negative 3 or negative 5, whatever our A is. So we're actually going to put it following it as almost like an exponent to let you know that that means from the left or right side. So what helps us to see these things and what we're talking about? Of course, the graph. So let's take a look at this weird looking function that I'm saying I want you to find the limit as x approaches one from the, that would be the left, and one from the, that would be the right. Okay, now I didn't give you the y axis. I just wanted to kind of let you think about this and can we come up with the limit? Does this exist? Remember, by definition, if it's not stated one side or the other, then it means both. 
And if we're not approaching the same thing from both sides, then we say that the limit does not exist. But remember, it can from one side or the other of one. Again, this would be the positive side. This would be the negative side, so to speak. All right? So yes, we can have values or limits that exist from one side or the other, but not both. So recall the definition that I gave you guys last section was called the intuitive definition of the limit. Well, now we can actually define it because we have both sides, the left and the right. And we can now give that in symbols without all of the words. So the limit exists if and only if what is true. See if you could fill in the blanks here. This is what you should have come up with. The left side has to equal the right side. They have to approach the same number, in other words. So make sure that you understand this, both what we've already talked about in the previous section and reviewed again, as well as in this section, which we can now give in symbols. From the left and the right, the limit exists if they're approaching the same value. If and only if that happens. All right, a few other definitions I want to make sure that you know. 224 A and B, I'm calling it because they're so similar. If we add some constant, we'll call C, and that's our function. It's approaching some value A, then what would we get? Or if it's C, some constant, and we're approaching that, what would we get? And if you're not quite sure, what did I mention often will help you see it? Graph it. And remember, these would be our functions. Let's go ahead and think about that. Pause it if you must, and even graph it if you want to see it. Otherwise, the answer would be thinking about this as our line y equals x. That means whatever x is, y is, and vice versa. So if we're approaching an x value of a, then that means the y value would also be a. For a constant, it's constantly that. So if I was to graph that, say up at five, it would be up at five everywhere, this horizontal line. So no matter what A you decided to choose, you would get that same value of C. All right, so worth noting, something that's pretty easy, we'll generalize this down the road, but let's continue on and explore some infinite possibilities. So when would you have a limit that is equal to positive or negative infinity? Remember, we discussed this a little bit ago. These are called infinite limits. And of course, there's going to be one from the left as well as from the right. And does it matter where you put those? Yes, according to my definition, I already told you that these are from the left and these are from the right. We can even have it be on both sides. And remember, if they do not specify whether it's from the right or the left, then that means it has to be from both. And both could either both be going to infinity or negative infinity. So these are what are called infinite limits because our limit came out infinity. The L, if you would, the solution for our limit would be that Y value as X approaches one side, the left or the right, or in this case, both. When do you think we would get these infinite limits? Well, let's define them so you don't have to guess, but please think about it first, and then we'll go ahead and define them. If you already took a peek at this, go ahead and go for it. Keep in mind, we said that we cannot have a zero in the denominator. And if we are approaching our X value, that A, and we plugged it in for X, you can see that A minus A would give you a zero. And that's no good. And by no good, we mean that our y value, our function, our equation is this. Then if we plug that in for x, we don't get anything out. So at that value of a, we know that we don't get a y value up here or down here, which as you can see forms this thing called 
a vertical asymptote. So filling in these blanks, depending on if n is positive even integer or positive odd integer, then these will behave differently. Now notice for even, remember we said even means same. So if we had a graph where our A was here and we had that vertical asymptote, if it's even, then that means that that number on bottom would be a squared, a fourth, six, whatever. Then no matter if we're on the left or the right and this comes out positive or negative, when it's even, it's going to shoot up to positive infinity. Where if it's odd, remember, we have this asymptote here. If it's odd, it could shoot up to positive or negative infinity on the right or positive or negative infinity on the left. So that's going to completely be determined by what's down here and whether it comes out positive or negative since that n is odd. And if it's to the left of a and you're subtracting a, or if it's to the right of a and you're subtracting a from that, then you know that this one would come out positive and this one would come out negative infinity. All right, this will make more sense when we start graphing these things and you'd be able to visualize it. But again, just doing a definition dump on you on this second section with all of these limits that we are now introduced to and getting a little bit more comfortable with, hopefully. Definition 227 says that if this occurs, where we get from the left a positive or negative infinity, or from the right, or even from both sides, what would that mean we would have? That means we would have a vertical asymptote, and it would always be at the line where x is equal to a, and y could be anything. Right? Hopefully that makes sense. I kind of gave you a little visual of it, but and we will get into more detail with it as we progress. So I know that's a lot of definitions and things to kind of throw at you and not give you many graphs, but go through it, read the ancillary text in OpenStax. It'll give you a little bit more detail. This is mainly just our notes so that you have it nice and concise. And I add in some of the questions and things that I think will help continue working with these. And as Buzz always says, we will now continue to move to infinity and beyond with these. All right, keep working hard. I'll see you at the next video, 2.3.